Hey everyone, we are streaming live from the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco. This is an interactive live stream on the NBC Bay Area YouTube and Facebook pages. And so if you are watching on one of those uh, websites, please chime in with your comments and your questions because we want to hear from you. I'm going to come out in front of the camera and say hi. I'm Jonathan Bloom. I'm a digital reporter at NBC Bay Area. I love covering this conference every year. And uh, as you can see, this is kind of almost back to its pre-pandemic size. This is a, a huge convention hall. Actually, all three of the convention halls here in the underground portion of the Moscone Center are filled with the technology and the people that is used uh, that, that bring you games, the, the video games, in some cases even board games, but mainly video games and some VR games. And we're going to just explore this convention center, these three huge underground convention halls full of technology and people and creative ideas. And uh, this is, like I said, an interactive live stream. So please give us your comments, your questions. If you ask a question, we'll try to find the answer. If there's something you want to see more of, tell us you want to see more of it, and we'll go ahead and try to do that for you. But we're just going to walk around. There is, there's no script. There's no game plan. Uh, we're going to start with some of the larger booths and the larger exhibitors. Uh, companies you might have heard of, like Meta, you know, which makes Facebook and Instagram, and over there, uh, uh, Unreal Engine and Epic Games. Epic Games is known for Fortnite, of course, and Unreal is the technology that they use to build that and so many other games. So we're going to start with the big exhibits. We're going to go look at some game nostalgia. Then we're going to dig into some of the motion capture and the other technology that is used to, to make the lifelike characters in these games. Then we're going to take a walk and see what we find in the, in the center convention hall. I, I have a feeling, though, that we're going to end up at the very end at the Alt Control exhibit, which is a lot of experimental and, and academic projects uh, to change the way people control games using uh, everything from a, a plunger to a teddy bear as, as game controllers. So that's kind of a loose idea of what I'm hoping to show you. We're limited only by our time and our battery life. Everything else is the sky is the limit. So I'm going to go in and get behind the camera, and uh, we're going to see, let's see, Jose, Jose Medina says, any new Nintendo or PlayStation being unveiled? Uh, no, as far as I know, there are no new consoles being unveiled from either of those companies. Uh, but of course, we would love to see both of those things. By the way, if there are any issues with our signal, please um, go ahead and let me know because um, uh, because I can't exactly tell uh, how the how the stream is looking. But if you if you just go ahead and let me know, um, I, I can't see what we're doing right now, but I can see your comments. So we are walking right now through the South Hall of the Moscone Center. This is historically where some of the biggest exhibits are at the Game Developers Conference. And our first stop here is the Epic Games exhibit. They are the people who make Fortnite and the people who make Unreal Engine, uh, which is the uh, software that is used to make so many games, so many of the big AAA games from the big uh, game studios. And as you see, they're giving talks right out okay, here on the floor. Can see that that's projecting a texture into the world there? but it's stretching along here. And it's stretching along there because- And these talks are gotcha, standing room only sometimes. You basically need to tell the thing, hey, look at the direction and What you're looking at is kind of the inner facing. workings of That's a game a that gotcha. is in the process of being but built. But when I plug that in, uh, it may be kind of hard on that screen, but you can see that that's all wrapped in scratches, yeah? All right. You're so talking about building some of the most in intricate textures of the surface of things. You know, a lot of these games have very photorealistic, three-dimensional uh, textures, characters, like animations. We... And of course, what is a convention without freebies? So as you can see, Unreal Engine is giving out popcorn. Delicious smelling movie popcorn. How is the popcorn? Have you tried the popcorn yet? Not yet, not yet. Look at this. All right, here we go, here we go. Let's get our, our first taste test live on YouTube. Good? good awesome, good. awesome. It is good popcorn. Okay, so there's the Unreal Engine logo. You can see this is a big, two-story, very elaborate booth. So for some people luckier than me uh, are getting cookies and uh, looks like T-shirts. Looks like people are getting T-shirts there. And the cookies are just, wow, those cookies are, are going like hotcakes. They're not hotcakes, though. They're cookies. They look good. This is a you know this is a big celebration in, in many cases. Uh, developers who uh, work on games uh, at home or, or with remote teams. This is one of their only chances to see their their colleagues throughout the year. And um, one of the things that they uh, that they do uh, here at Unreal Engine is they have this thing called MetaHuman. Uh, that is not a person. That's an animation, but it's an animation that is made from the motion capture of a person. Very photorealistic humans. So soon, people who work on their games in isolation or with remote teams will probably be having meetings with their teammates 
uh, in these virtual, very photorealistic virtual forms. And as you can see, this is a, a good opportunity for people to get advice, solve technical problems. Uh, one of the, uh, you know, Unreal just had a keynote this morning where they announced some of the newest features of their, of their game building engine. And uh, some of what they talked about had to do with this. Uh, this is a, uh, an animal from Lego for you, made entirely out of Lego bricks. Oops, sorry about that. Everybody trying to get photos of this Lego statue, so we'll move along fairly quickly so that we are not getting in the way of a photographic masterpiece. But uh, there, well, we can't even fit the whole thing in the frame. There it is, a statue made out of Lego bricks in honor of Lego Fortnite. <laughs> A lot of people from a lot of different countries come to this conference. You can see some of the countries actually have, have booths. There's a, there's a booth from Germany. Uh, we saw one from Italy. Um, there's a, there are some Swiss games elsewhere on the floor. I haven't even seen what's in this corner of the floor. Um, but if you guys could, just uh, give, me a, give me a comment. Tell me where you're from, what you're hoping to see. Uh, drop something in the comments because we want this to be an interactive live experience for you guys. This is uh, one, of the, one of the most dynamic and creative days of the entire conference, and so I want you guys to be a, a part of what we, what we see and what we show everybody else. A lot of very elaborate booths here. I hear some music coming from that end of the floor, but most of the activity actually seems to be over here in this direction. You know, uh, the, the folks who organized the conference told me there are fewer lounges on the floor this year. Uh, instead of like four lounges, they're down to two. And I think that's actually because there are more exhibitors, or at least the exhibitors that are here are taking up more space. But you can see there are just, there are not the big open spaces on the floor like there were when we first came back from the pandemic. Uh, this conference is slowly uh, regaining its, its size and stature uh, from, from what, it, what it used to be. Um, I want to come over here. One of the booths that is smaller this year, by the way, is the Unity booth. Unity is another game engine, uh, you know, 3D rendering engine for building games, uh, just like Unreal Engine. And uh, I, for some reason, their booth is much smaller this year. It used to be very elaborate. There was, there was one year they had a huge augmented reality exhibit going on in their booth. So for whatever reason, they have made the decision to have a smaller booth this year. Uh, but some of the other booths have been steadily growing. And here's, here's Meta, of course, uh, the, the company behind uh, Facebook and Instagram, but also the company behind the Meta Quest line of virtual reality products and the Meta Quest ecosystem, formerly known as Oculus. And so as you can see, people here, here are waiting in line to try some of these immersive game experiences. What are you about to go try? I'm going to try the Assassin's Creed on the Meta Quest. And uh, what, what, are you, what are you hoping to find out about this? I'm trying to see what's experiencing the VR gaming. Like this Assassin's Creed is a famous branding that everybody plays it, but this is a new, completely new device that plays with an uh, old genre. So I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. Now you are wearing those Facebook Ray-Ban glasses, aren't you? Oh yeah, I am. Tell me about those glasses. Oh, it's really... I mean, it's very convenient. Like, I like to record in my life, and you can just record it by just typing it, and it's convenient. So are you recording me right now? Now I can do that if you want to do You're it. recording me recording you. Oh, look at that. There's the light. The light comes on. I love yeah? it. OK. I love it. Where are you here from? Uh, I'm from Los Angeles. You're from Los Angeles. So you yeah. didn't have to make too long of a trip to get here. Yeah, it is. Do you, do you build games yourself? Uh, I work for the visual concepts. So we do the sports game. We do the WWE 2K. Fantastic. Sports games, such a huge genre of games. It is. Awesome. Thank you so much. Right, thank Appreciate you. it. Giovanni wants me to have a look at the Avalanche booth. We will definitely have a look at the Avalanche booth. We couldn't miss it if we tried, and it's huge. Uh, that is, as soon as we exit this convention hall, we will, we will run smack into the Avalanche booth. So that is definitely on our list of places to visit. Thanks for asking. Uh, we have some witches here. What are you guys brewing up? What, 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 are you, what are you guys brewing up? Are you guys promoting a game that is about wizardry and, and witchcraft? Of yeah. course we are. And yeah, what is that game? It's Simon the Sorcerer Origins. It's the prequel of Simon the Sorcerer from 1993. Uh, and we are Small Thing Studios. So you're doing a prequel of a game that is 21 years old. The game yes. is old enough to buy a beer, and now we finally learn the origin story. Yes, of course, uh, all original. Is this your first time coming to this conference in a costume to promote your game? Yes, it is. It is. 
Uh, have, have you gotten a lot of attention because of these fantastic hats? Yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I wish that I wish you guys lots of luck here at the show. Thank you. So Thanks so much. much. I'm gonna just get a, get a quick look at the, the pointy hats here. Thank you so much. You don't know what you're gonna. Have. There's an avalanche shirt right there. Giovanni would love to see what avalanche has. Yeah, we will definitely check them out in just a few minutes. I'm, I'm gonna make it down to this end of the floor, and then as soon as we exit this convention hall, there, boom, we're gonna run right into them. As you can see. There is TikTok right there. TikTok is yet another uh, important platform for streaming of games. And game streaming is, of course, a huge and growing field. Hey, I have that lens. I'm not using it right now, though. It's a big lens. A um, lot, lot, uh, lot of different media outlets here. It's always fun to see all the different, uh, all the different gear and some of the one-man live streaming setups that you see. TikTok has a filming notice, of course. I should have a filming. I'm, oh, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm wearing a badge that says I'm media. So <laughs> there's your filming notice right there. Uh, but all of the different companies that, that uh, have to do with uh, the game world, Discord, for example. You know, Discord doesn't make games, but they are a, a key part of the gaming community. They're you know a messaging app that is so much more than a messaging app. They you know they do live real-time voice chat. Uh, they are a, a primary platform for communication in so many communities, and their roots are in gaming. So as you can see, Discord is giving a, a big talk here, and there's a lot of these talks. They, they just spill out into the aisles, and they become really standing room only sorts of affairs. They're talking about uh, in-app purchase uh, on the Discord platform, and a lot of people clearly interested in that topic. It is unbelievable just how many people it takes to fill up the Moscone Center, and, and yet the, you, the, 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 there's always room for more people, but it just, it is unbelievably crowded today, as you can see, uh, especially around uh, some of these more uh, live, uh, interactive types of exhibits. This is one of those community lounge spaces. Of course, a lot of the vendors, they have lounges too, uh, especially if you're uh, planning to play their games. And um, if we come over here, one of the places that you can play games is actually maybe not what you'd expect at a conference about the future of gaming, and that is this exhibit we pay uh, a little visit to every year, which is about the history of gaming. It is uh, arcade play, and it is sponsored by the Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment in Oakland, uh, whose mission is to preserve uh, the art of video games, which you know you can't really hang a video game in a in a museum or preserve it in a in, a, in an archives the way that you can with a film or a painting, uh, because video games have to be played on computer systems, and those computer systems need to be maintained, and they sometimes fall apart. But if you look over here, these folks are playing some of the original iterations of Atari's Pong game on the original devices, including the cathode ray tube television sets, those little 13-inch television sets that you, you or I might have played on when we were kids. You miss E3. Is E3 not happening anymore? I, I, I haven't been to E3, but because th this one is the conference that happens here in the Bay Area, but uh, is E3 happening again, or is it, is it coming back? All right, here's, a, here's an iteration of Pong that is being played right now. And this is like, this is the very old school with the actual paddles on the console. Look at that. And the later versions had uh, deep, the, the plug-in paddles, like the Atari 2600. This one has the actual paddles directly on the console. This is like the old school Pong, Pong game. It's, it's uh, you know, the Atari has now brought out some coffee tables that actually play Pong with a, a physical uh, ball and paddles, but they're still rectangular, just like uh, an homage to the, uh, the rectangular graphics in the original Pong game. And here is, uh, here's another very, very old school iteration of the, of the Pong game. Let's see. Wow. That is a, I mean, it's a plug-in game controller, all right. It looks... A little bit like a sewing machine or something. <laughs> that is a um, that is a very well preserved piece of vintage hardware right there. Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment, based in Oakland, by the way. They have this ever-growing collection. There's a, there's a Next computer. This is Steve Jobs' startup, but between when he was at Apple and when he was at Apple again. And uh, here, these folks are playing on a Nintendo GameCube. And lest we forget what was many of our first experience with video games, which was the Apple II. A lot of schools had these. 
We probably played a little Oregon Trail on the Apple II. It's like the original rendition of Mario Kart right there. Always a classic. On what would have been a very huge TV set for its, for its day and age. And there's the N60. It's a little bit of a look at the, the history of video games here at GDC Arcade Play by Oakland's Museum of Art and Digital Entertainment. There, there we go, right there. That is a, that's my first console right there, the 8-bit NES with the zapper and the duck hunt cartridge. There we go. And everybody is signing this huge poster. see. Oh, and, and of course, we can't forget the very first Xbox, which was huge compared to today's consoles. What are you, what are you playing there? Uh, this is Halo 1. Halo I know, 1. I know I'm getting old when the games I grew up with end up being in a museum exhibit. So, <laughs> you know. Boy, That's don't exciting. I know it. <laughs> and so was, was, was Halo one of the games that you played forever and ever when you were younger? Yeah, I still do. I still do. I'm glad that they kept on re-releasing it in sort of other platforms and keeping stuff updated. Now, is so. the, do you need to have the old console to play the original version of Halo? Um, I, I did own the original Xbox as a kid. Um, now it's uh, released on sort of more modern platforms through like things like the Halo Master Chief Collection. So it's pretty accessible. Actually, I have some friends that are a bit younger than me. They didn't grow up with these games. And so them kind of re-releasing it was like a great way to get them introduced to some older titles that they might not have heard of. Very so, cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, you bring out the original version of Quake and I will get no work done. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. A, that was my kind of original first person shooter game. Yeah, that's a classic. That's it is a, a classic. classic. Hey, thank way to the back of the uh, the South Convention Hall of the Moscone City. Oh, look at that. We got gaming chairs. You never know what you're going to run across at this show. Uh, yeah. How's the chair? Oh, it's sitting great right now. Yeah. So is, is this a chair for relaxation or a chair for action? Oh, it's a chair for both. It's built for functionality. It's built for aesthetics. Um, our, our background is that we've been building chairs for 35 years, but for 24-7 environments. So they're all steel, they're automotive grade leather, uh, they're built in the USA, they're built to last. What um, makes it a good gaming chair? Oh man, well a gaming chair is a loaded term. I like to think of our chair as a, a high-end luxury office chair. Um, so it, it, it will get the job done, it's all steel components. Um, so there's nothing short on quality in this thing. So And it looks kind of like a car seat, like in a really high-end car. Yeah, we work with a lot of partners from the automotive industry. Um, so you can see the inspiration that the designs have, uh, have carried through. Um, very automotive inspired, for sure. Very automotive inspired indeed. Yeah. Not just a gaming chair, but a high-end office chair. Thank you so much. And what's the name of the product? Iron Horse. Yes, this is Iron Horse Custom. You can find out more information at ironhorsecustom.com. All right. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I mean, yeah, so really does look like you could drive your, drive your car or your driving game from that chair. So now we've got, we've, we've hit the motion capture portion of the program. Are you going to commit acts of martial arts with those? Um, I'm going to beat on some trolls. Beat on some trolls. Get that going in a second. I got one's a laser, one's a club. Oh, wow. okay, got it. It's not that, that's different. <laughs> so we use these for two different things. Got it, okay. As soon as we get the game going, oh, that's something to do. One is a laser, one is a club. Both of them are actually pieces of foam with little tracking markers on them. Lasers in the left hand. And it's just been brought to my attention that live chat might have been disabled in the YouTube stream. So my apologies for that. It should be on now if you guys want to try to chat again. Um, I will uh, try to respond to your comments. 
if you're just joining us, we're live at the Game Developers Conference here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. On the part of the convention floor where motion tracking is being displayed. This is motion capture of fanciful weapons, clubs, lasers, anything that you might want to beat up on a troll with. Thank you so much for the demo. I'm getting sweaty just watching it. <laughs> of course, there are many companies that provide various kinds of multi-capture, uh, motion capture, I should say, technology. OptiTrack here, they had an exhibit last year with some pro skateboarders. As you can see here, it looks like some of the motion capture folks in their motion capture suits are taking a break, but you know what's happening in the process? People, regular people attending the conference are beating up on something or other. Small creatures, it looks like, with Thor's hammer. That is Thor's hammer right there. And they make a satisfying squish sound, it sounds like. So let's see what's going on here. We'll be here just in time to catch the next round. Looks like you're in a barnyard. And uh, I'm not sure I want to know what that is. It might be quicksand. It might be something the hogs left behind. I really don't know. Uh, there's, a, there's a little creature coming up out of the ground right there. <laughs> Where do, where do you think you might use something like this one day? Well, I mean, uh, you know, the mocap aspect is really exciting, but that's just a one-time thing. That what I'm really seeing is the live mocap and like the way that I'm feeding it into the game. I mean, there's lots of location-based entertainment stuff that you see out there in the in the world that uh, could be used for, but really, I'm just trying to dream up the next game when it comes to what to build for. A an immersive, live, interactive experience that uses your own body as the controller. Exactly. Yeah. We, uh, we talked last year. What are you, what are you guys what, what are you guys showing off this year? So this year we're showing two things. Uh, live performers doing uh, double dutch, so jump ropes. Uh, we have a live performance every hour. And we also have the track and smack video game where we use a mallet to track a mobile. So it's an off-brand whack-a-mole game. Track and smack. Yeah, I love it's it. right there. And, and do you think that this is an experience that's somewhat like one that I might one day find at my local dead mall turned interactive experience center? You could. Uh, I mean, the goal here was just to create some game, some experience for, for um, the uh, attendees to experience. Um, but in there you could, yeah. It's very easy to port that technology into a a commercial, a commercial venture. So, so in the case of your performance capture, they're wearing suits, but in the case of this, Thor's mallet is 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 the only thing that you're tracking. Exactly. At. So it's very easy. It's pick up and play. You don't need. There's no setup time. It's very easy and convenient for any user to just pick up the mallets and start whacking moles. Fantastic. It is whole body whack-a-mole <laughs> here at the OptiTrack booth. Thank you so much at the Game Developers Conference 2024 here in San Francisco. We're getting set up for another round of, of whack-a-mole. You can see those little, let's zoom in and see if we can show them, those little optical tracking dots there on Thor's hammer. This guy, he is, he is so cool, he's not even taken out his headphones to play this game. And you can see the mallet is kind of floating in space there. Oh, boom, got him. Ah. Boom, got him. He's getting the hang of it. He is totally getting the hang of it. Boom, got him. And ah. boom, got him. like there we go let's you want to see in, in YouTube YouTube audience for some reason my chat has not been practiced uh, properly uh, making its way over to my other window but it looks like you guys are looking for Earth 2 gameplay well can you tell me where I can find that there is a metagravity booth over there is that where they're showing off that game 
All right, we have looked at Whack-A-Mole. Whack-A-Mole using sophisticated multi-camera motion capture technology here at the Game Developers Conference. As we see, there are there are lots of different kinds of motion capture happening here. These guys are giving a talk right now, and as you can see, it seems to be a pretty pretty popular talk based on the sheer number of people <laughs> who are watching this demo. So the body, cool. What about drumsticks? That's that's the what if. What about tracking the symbols? What about tracking everything? All right. It was a mistake to also try to do facial mocap at the same time. on this. Yep, that's true. Motion capture is cheaper than hiring a thousand animators. It is, uh, you know, and, and the next thing that, that we're talking about here at GDC, and a big topic this year, is actually AI. Uh, you know, in much the same way as, as motion capture was a, a more cost-effective way for studios to animate characters, you know, AI is becoming a, a replacement for certain kinds of, uh, you know, certain kinds of finished art. Uh, I talked to a game developer the other day who, uh, whose designer simply made some sketches and uh, the sketches were turned into finished art with shaders by uh, an AI bot. So yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the job of a game developer is evolving. You could say that some jobs are getting replaced, but then other jobs are sort of potentially created, you could argue, in the process. So this is the skills booth, by the way. Skills is a uh, skill-based game betting platform. And uh, their CEO was here at this conference giving a, a talk about uh, about trying to cheat in, in those sorts of uh, those sorts of uh, spaces. There were apparently some some platforms that he thought were giving the player a raw deal. That is an evolving evolving area of the game space. Now. Uh, let's see. Somebody wanted to see the Meta Gravity booth, and we were also going to circle back past Meta. Let's see. Ah, oh, Mario says six stream, exactly what I was looking for. Thanks, Mario. Thanks for tuning in. Let's see. So here is the Meta Gravity booth. They are showing off Edge of Chaos. They're showing off their templates for Unreal Engine. Here's a live demo. Let's see what people are demonstrating here. This is Wilder World. Demo of Wilder World happening here. Yeah, that's, a, that's a hairpin right there. <laughs> that is. And you're going to go right, right at the end here. It is a very fast car. Oh, boom! Yeah, the great thing about a game is that you can run into a guardrail and your car doesn't always blow up. It sometimes blows up, but not always. All right, you're looking for Earth 2. <laughs> Let's see, there it is, all right. We have found the Earth 2 demo here at the Metagravity booth. Thank you for guiding me to it. There we go. Looks like you have something to do with this game. Probably. One of our live stream viewers is dying to know a little bit about it. What can you tell me about this game? Uh, who has you here? What's that? <laughs> who has you here? Who has NBC Bay Area? Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, 
Okay, and and who are, and who am I streaming to? You're streaming to the NBC Bay Area audience on YouTube. Oh my goodness! Don't tell me the Earth Two community have got in there and asking you to come here. Or... They did. They literally did. Yeah. Okay. They hijacked. Okay. <laughs> Earth Two has hijacked NBC. Great news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, what we have here is uh, yeah the very first playable demo of E Two V One, which is the one to one scale digital. Earth that we've been working on for the past three years. Um, yeah, it's it's here for anybody to kind of play around with. I can show you a few things. Yeah, show me a few things like, about it. Yeah, so yeah, okay. So, um, so yeah, we have the, the main idea for um, showcasing this here today is is purely to uh, prove that we do have a one-to-one -one scale world that we have created. It's all real time. Uh, it's all uh, it's all like instantly streamed. You can zoom out. You can move to anywhere in the world. Awesome. Uh, and zoom into anywhere in the world. Where would you just... like to go? Good question. Let's go down and have a look at maybe London. London. All right. Let's look at London. Rorty and Mick says that looks dope. I need it. <laughs> so the concept. The concept is that we're actually wiping all man-made artifacts uh, to allow players who own land inside of Earth to to recreate the the virtual work, uh, world themselves. Oh wow! So you're taking so, world building to the next level. Yeah, literally, literally. <laughs> yeah. Um, so if you if you have a look here, we actually have London. Um, I'll just turn this these flags off, and I'll turn. Okay. So what I've done now is I've I've turned on the satellite imagery mm -hmm. just to demonstrate exactly how accurate our system is. So you can see, you can see how accurate it, um, the mm -hmm. topology matches the actual London city. Now, if I turn that off and on, you can see. Wow. So the idea is that. Um, you know, we have this. We have this world. So, if I zoom in here, you can still see the satellite imagery. Mm -hmm. But as we go down to the ground level, oh, look at that! It's, it's all like going back to like a pristine Earth before mankind touched it. Wow. Yeah. That, which is going back a long time because London is a very old city. It is. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so, if I turn that off, uh, it's a completely playable Earth. So you can drop avatars uh, anywhere in the world. You can run around. Um, what we have here today is a demonstration of uh, how the Earth is playable. So you can pull out a gun, uh, do some do some target practice. Nice. Uh, oh. So what we're demoing here is just not anything special. It's not like a, a AAA quality game or anything like that. It's just just demonstrating that it is interactable. You can spawn an avatar, um, and you can have like things running around. And are these trees that are that are native to London? So the biome system is very much a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Some of these trees would be native to London. We haven't yet um, we haven't yet like completely perfectly accurately copied every biome in the world into Earth too. It's very much a work in progress. And as I was saying to a couple of people who came up and asked earlier, uh, you know, we may not actually want to recreate the world perfectly anyway. I mean, it's it's kind of like a form of escapism getting into in, getting into Earth 2 E2v1. So escaping into another virtual world, maybe you don't want it to look exactly like the real world, right? Mm -hmm. So there could be opportunities where we have a winter wonderland in the middle of the desert or, you know, like a, an oasis, uh, you know, a mega oasis in the middle of the Sahara. Nice. So it doesn't always have to adhere to the exact the exact uh, locations were. I hope I'm doing good here. You yeah, kind of, you're you doing kind of great. Man, you're here. doing great, and the comments are blowing up. Thank you guys okay. for commenting. We 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 see we love Earth too. Looks amazing. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so somebody, um, so, yeah, somebody wanted us to come over here, and they're very happy. So yeah, I really okay. appreciate your time. No, Thank you so much. It's not a problem at all. Awesome. Um, Earth two. We're looking at Earth two here at the Meta Gravity booth. And tell me your name. Uh, Shane Isaac, I'm the founder. Shane it's, Isaac, yeah. the founder. Thank you, yeah. sir. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Nice Thank you. Have a great you. rest of the show. Yeah, and to you. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, so we just took a look at Earth 2 at Metagravity. Thank you guys for guiding me over to that portion of the exhibit. In case you're just joining us, we're here at the Game Developers Conference here, here in San Francisco on the, the third and arguably biggest day of the conference. And we have now made a full revolution around the North Hall of the Moscone Center. But let's just look up for a second and look at how many people are coming down the escalators. Spectrum 3900 says, thank you for this. You're welcome, Spectrum 3900. I'm so glad that you guys uh, had, the, uh, had the forethought to guide me over there, and, and I'm glad that you uh, enjoyed that little preview that Shane gave us. All right, so as you can see, the Game Developers Conference, a very crowded experience. Now, the next place we're going is somebody was dying to see the Avalanche Web3 Gaming booth. I hope that you guys still want to see that. Let's see here. Um, I'm just checking the, the Facebook comments because it's been difficult to, uh, to look at both at the same time. Flipping back over to YouTube now. Elaine says I'm awesome. Thank you, Elaine. Or maybe you were talking to, to Shane because he's, he's pretty awesome. <laughs> Let's see. All right, so this is the Avalanche Web3 gaming booth. And uh, as you see, we have this eSports experience going on here with Off The Grid. So there's, there's your Off The Grid logo. And here are your players. This is a, a massive lounge out in what used to be the lobby of Moscone South. It is now a whole new exhibit hall, the Central Hall, uh, which was built during the remodel of the Moscone Center. And we're just going to look down the line here at this, this multiplayer gaming experience. And these players, I'm going to have to crank down my aperture a little bit to get a little more depth of field. These players look like they are having a very intense gaming experience. Spectrum asks, is this a Web3 game? You know, I think so, which is kind of impressive when you think about it. No. She thinks that people should return to nature, right? What was it? Hashtag go outside. Take her outside and come. Her, I love it. We just we just bleeped the profanity there. This is obviously a uh, public experience here. Let's push the space elevator. I'm gonna come in here and have a look. Try not to distract anyone too much. It is good to see Web3 Gaming on, with eSports, isn't it? Six players playing simultaneously here, although the platform boasts it is fast enough for five million players. LED wall behind those six players. What 
can you tell me uh, about what's going on behind you? One of my live stream viewers really wanted to see this booth. Sure, sure. So uh, right now we got Off The Grid up there, up on the screen, and then we got uh, Blood Loop on all the computers uh, for demoing and playing. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Shrapnel, Friday we'll have Providence, uh, but we're the, uh, we're the Avalanche chain and we offer uh, Web3 solutions for video games and uh, on-chain gaming. So somebody asked, and this may sound like an obvious question to you, is that a Web3 game they're playing over there? It is. It is. So Off the Grid, which like I said is currently up on the screen, is a Web3 game. Uh, Blood Loop, that they've been playing all day, is another Web3 game. we got tons of them on the Avalanche uh, So the chain. folks down there at the, at, the, uh, at the long table, they're yep. playing Blood Loop right now? They're currently playing Blood Loop. And, and so how, how do you get that kind of graphic performance out of a Web3 game? Uh, that's not something I'm going to be able to answer. Unfortunately, uh, I lead the community and gaming teams, but uh, if you wanted to go back there and chat with some of the developers there over there, you can find well, and, and just tell me, what, what's the, have you played that game? Like, what's the experience of playing a Web3 game like? Uh, so it's just like playing any game you've ever played before. We're trying to break down that barrier and show everybody that, you know, whether you're in Web2 or Web3, gaming is gaming, and we're building awesome games. All right. Well, I mean, and, 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 and my how gaming has come a long way since since we were kids. Yep, for you sure. Know? Awesome. Thank you so Anytime. much. Anytime. You guys have a great one. Really appreciate it. No problem. There you go. There's the uh, the Avalanche banner. Mario wants to know how the vibe is in here. You know, the vibe in here is uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty festive. Um, everybody seems to be really interested in checking out the latest stuff. You know, it took this conference a couple of years to recover from the pandemic. This was the first conference to be canceled as a result of the pandemic. And um, when it came back, the very first time it came back, it kind of came back halfway. And so it, it's really, it's taken a couple of years for us to get back from the are we back, are we back, and into the okay, what's next. And, uh, and so I think really it feels like we're kind of back to business as usual this year, which is a really, uh, really cool feeling. Um, I think another thing uh, that, that's interesting is that this year, one of the, one of the uh, key focuses of the conference is actually to talk about uh, looking back. Uh, last year, it was very much looking forward. They were trying to get out of that pandemic mindset. And uh, this year, they're all about looking back uh, at how to preserve old games and what we can learn from old games. And so you know, you'll see a lot of games done in that retro pixel art style. Um, and uh, you'll see a lot of uh, talks this year on uh, preservation of games. I mean, there's some games that were played online just 15 years ago that you can't play today. And, and so there's a lot of discussion in the industry on uh, how to do that. At the same time, as the industry is also grappling with very new questions about artificial intelligence. Let's see, Spectrum wants to come. <laughs> you used to come every year to GDC. Uh, yeah, I know, it is good that the industry's back. And it's, it's definitely taken a minute. Uh, but it is, um, it, I would say, I mean, if, if you were here in 2019, this is still different from 2019. 2019 was huge. It was almost too huge. It was overwhelming. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, in 2019, Google uh, was a sponsor. They actually did a keynote. That was when they launched Stadia. Stadia, obviously, one of those, one of those experiments that didn't work out. Um, and Google is, I haven't seen them have a booth. I think they're, they're here, uh, they're over in Moscone West. Uh, in, in sort of a more B2B fashion. They're not really launching a, a big consumer product this year, but they are here for gamers because obviously uh, a lot of game developers uh, launch games on the, uh, the Google Play Store uh, to be played on Android devices. Um, this is just, I always love to stop here at these, these steps uh, that divide the north from the south half of the Moscone Convention Halls. Uh, this is just a really, uh, a really cool shot of uh, all of the people just milling around the sea of humanity, this swirling sea of humanity. Uh, that exists in this central convention hall. This very, I don't know if you guys remember, if you used to come to Moscone in the old days, this used to be like literally an underground passageway, just a little hallway between the north and south halves of the complex. And now the, the whole thing has been turned into a, a hall full of exhibits. So Moscone keeps growing and the shows keep growing to fill it, even though you know they had a hiatus there for about three years. So we're hitting about the uh, about, about the 45 minute mark on our stream, and uh, if, if there's anything else you guys want to see, please let me know. I can see your chats on YouTube. I'll flip back over to check the Facebook comments every now and then. Somebody said Spectrum 3900 says AVAX. Let's go. Epic's booth. More Earth 2. I love it. Uh, let's see. Uh, where is? Oh, you. Uh, we, we showed Epic's booth earlier. We uh, we might be able to go back there uh, toward the end a little bit uh, if you guys uh, if you guys want to see more about the Epic more of the Epic booth. Um, but yeah, we can um, we can show show a little more of that later. But Epic has a huge booth; it's a two-story booth. So this is the uh, the stuff that's going on in the central hall. And, and as we mentioned, there are there are booths here 
representing developers from all sorts of different countries. This is the India Pavilion, which includes some games uh, developed in India. And uh, there was a, an Italian uh, booth back there for a while. And um, but seriously, tell you guys, tell me, tell me more about what you want to see. Uh, Moscone is big, and uh, and there's a lot of stuff in here. There's a there's an area over in the corner uh, with some of the games that uh, we saw. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap with the uh, independent games event uh, from Monday, which was the mix. It's a media event for indie games. A uh, it's a fun event. It's always a loud event. It's very hard to hear people talk in there. And as we promised, this is the the Swiss Games Pavilion. Not to be confused with Swiss cheese or Swiss Army knives, although it is similar in color to a Swiss Army knife. That very vivid red carpet. They, they, they've had this booth for a couple of years, and it always just looks like a cozy place to sit. Show us some AI. That is a great question. Any idea where we could find that? Uh, I mean, often, the AI is sort of invisible because it's being used in the game development process. Um, it's, it's, I've talked to some folks who have built uh, you know, computer opponents, and they're not really using the sort of generative AI that is the big topic of discussion to build those. Uh, those are, in many cases, being used to help create the art behind some of these games. And, and in, in many cases, you don't know it was used that way until you talk to the developer. Um, in much the same way as people are using Dolly and ChatGPT <laughs> to generate uh, writing and images, uh, in many cases, these uh, game developers are, are using those sorts of technologies to get more quickly to a finished product. All right, we have a game called Sugar Mess that is being played in a virtual reality headset. And I bet if we go around the corner, see what a player is seeing on the screen. Feels like Nintendo. What feels like Nintendo? Are there more VR AR projects? Now, you know, that is a really interesting question. Um, I don't see as much of those things on display this year. Last year, I saw not only VR and AR games in development, but I also saw a lot of VR and AR accessories. And I have not yet seen those this year. I saw accessories for controlling uh, VR games. I saw accessories for experiencing uh, VR games with, with haptic feedback. Uh, and I have not seen that yet this year. Uh, does not mean that it isn't happening, but it's not as big a focus of the exhibits at this year's Game Developers Conference for whatever reason. <laughs> there was somebody um, who had a, an Apple Vision Pro on display, which of course, you know, that is a product that you can go try at the Apple Store anytime. But uh, at, these, uh, at these conferences, sometimes it's anything to draw, draw you over to the booth. And uh, if the Apple Vision Pro draws people over to the booth, then, uh, <laughs> and they're gonna put that out there on display uh, to allow people to drift over who wanna try it out. Off the grid footage. Where am I gonna find that off the grid footage? Whose game is that? Let's see. Oh, yo, you were talking about the one that was at the, the booth we were just at. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that, uh, that, that was really, that was really well produced. Uh, cinematic trailer for that game we were looking at. There's the, uh, there's the Brazil Games Export Program. And we're making our way over, because I want to make sure we get, we have time to do this, we're making our way over to the, uh, the alternative controllers, which are always an amusing, uh, it, it's so different from everything we've looked at, because it's just, a lot of uh, experimentation. Like, if you were desi to design an arcade machine with a controller just for your game, what would it what would it look like? And that is what this exhibit, Alt Control, is is, is all about. Oh wow! Okay. You are shaking up a bottle of cola right now. Nice shake. Okay. Okay. 
idea for this. Thank you. How did you come up with this idea? Uh, I'm from Tokyo and, and Tokyo has Eremeka called Eremeka uh, classic game. It's my origin. So right. in my bad English. No, no worry, no worries at all. What is it what is it like having all these people here uh, testing out your game controller? Uh, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you, you so much. Jet Cola is the name of the game. Yeah thank you. Yes, Jet Cola. And the controller is a bottle of Jet Cola. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so now this is a fishing game that uses an actual fishing rod as the controller. For those of you who live in San Francisco, I often go running in an area where there are fishermen and fisherwomen. Fisher people, and I am often trying to make sure that I don't get hit by the casting of a fishing rod. Spectrum asked about synaptic controls. Yeah, probably not ready yet, although I'm sure Elon Musk is working on that. We're going to check in on our Facebook commenters while we play this fishing game. Every film you have needs to know one electrical engineer. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, I'll send that to your company. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so. Oh, no. It's the big tree hitbox. Oh, yeah. It's all invisible. All right, that is Grapple Fisher DX. Are we using mini blinds as a controller here? Do you have any extras? Because my mini blinds just broke. I'm kidding. Uh, how does this work? Spin, oh, spin, again, you've got a wine glass. Spinning glass. Okay. To charge power. Mm hmm. Push down blinds. Okay. Attack. Oh, nice. But it's a fighting game. Okay. Oh, it's a fighting game. Yeah. So, 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 how does, how do, can, can I watch? Or do you have two players? Can I watch them play? Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so it's a head-to-head -head fighting game that involves wine glasses and mini blinds. Do you guys have, do you guys have players who can show me how this works? Yeah. Okay. Can you can you demonstrate the game for me? All right, here we go. They're shaking, they're swirling the wine. They're swirling at the wine glasses. As electrical current zaps between their windows. They're swirling, they're swirling. They're opening up the blinds, peeking through. So, so, so how, how exactly does this work? You, you, are you charging up the lightning bolt when you swirl the glass? Yeah. Okay, you charge the lightning bolt and then, you, and then you're peeking through and you're zapping the other person by looking at it. I love it. Boss, oh wait, it's brandy. It's not wine, it's brandy. I love it. Boss, Blind, and Brandy. Thank you guys so much. That's very entertaining. Okay, now we have a cooperative flying game where you are a mosquito. Mosquito escapade. 
<laughs> All right. Who are, who are our next volunteers? Hey! I was hoping to watch a couple of people play this game. Are you guys? Someone else? Someone else? My arm is so sore, sorry. I didn't okay. realize the life of a skier are so hard, you know? Is this your game? Yes. Well, so, how, so how does it work? Um, so it's like, um, it, it can be a multiplayer game. It, it can also, like, you can play yourself. It's like you are a mosquito and you can wear those wings. And like, this, this is your controller to, to control the mosquito flying. Oh, so you could either be a mosquito all by yourself, or you could be half of a, a mosquito. Yes. <laughs> yes. Fantastic. And so let's see, it looks like these folks are, are suiting up with the wings here. Janie, you liked Earth too, and, and obviously seeing Shane was really cool too. Thank you for chiming in. There we go. All right, he's going to spread his wings for the first time. And let's see what the what the game display looks like. It is we are looking at an 8-bit pixel art kind of a aesthetic. And these incredibly large anatomically accurate mosquito wings. <laughs> or at least they're convincing. I don't know I don't know how anatomically accurate they are, but they're quite convincing. Once upon a time there was a very happy mosquito family. You see, there's the, uh, the instructions right there below the TV set. And a pipe cleaner mosquito up top just for kicks. The Dusty Lion, you're so welcome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. All right, we are in the cinematic portion of the game. We are watching the story. And there he is, flapping his wings on the screen. Boy, that thing has big eyeballs. I'm not sure those are anatomically correct, though. I don't, I don't know if, I mean, maybe somebody, maybe one of you guys, a biology expert, tell me, do mosquitoes have eyeballs that big? Here we go, he's, he's flying around. Oh. Almost got swatted there. And there are people trying to swat the mosquito left and right. I can't hear the buzzing from here, but I can certainly hear the swats. There's a dog. Uh, now there's a person sleeping on the bed. The mosquito is down to one heart of life. Oh, there's somebody cleaning the bathroom. Oh no, he's taking a shower, but he's kind of showering all over the floor. He's practicing a tennis swing. Oh, oh. Oh, are they playing tennis? What are they doing? All I know is that is bad news if you're a mosquito. Right out the window. Victory. All right, that was Mosquito Escape. The mosquito has escaped from the house. You're just joining us. We're in the, uh, in the North Hall of the Moscone Center at the Game Developers Conference going all week here in San Francisco. The specific exhibit that we're looking at right now is called Alt Control GDC. It is a, an exhibit of alternative controllers, some of them experimental, some of them graduate student projects, uh, some of them just ridiculous and hilarious. And uh, there, are, you know, there are two more convention halls full of stuff uh, here at Moscone that we have already been to, but we'll be walking back through those at the end. So please get in the comments, get in the chat if there's something that you want to see or something you want to see more of. Uh, drop it in there and we'll see if we can try to pick that up along our way. Here they are using a very complicated miniature house for a game called Miniature Nightmares. And here, 
I wonder if this is a game I've seen before. This game involves toilets and plungers. Can you really get any more ridiculous than that? I, I have actually seen Toilet Plunger used as a controller before. Uh, this would have been in 2018 or 19. The game was called Plunge, P-L-U-N-G-E, but there was an umlaut over the U. Uh, in that case, the controller was used as the plunger was used as a single button controller. Here, it looks like the plunger is being used as a joystick, but at the same time, it looks like the shifting back and forth on the toilet might also be part of the game. There's a little trigger button there on the handle of the plunger. I'm not sure what that's used for. But we're going to come around and have a look here. There you go. In case you were wondering, these people are actually sitting on the toilet. And it looks like they are driving these toilets. This is for sure a bad nightmare. I mean, I, mean, I can't imagine a nightmare worse than uncontrollably driving through a city while sitting on a toilet. Clock is at two minutes and counting up. We're about to run into a wall there. As you can see, it is a head-to-head. -head. And, and yes, by the way, that thing, that meter down at the bottom, that is a poop emoji. And I, it looks like you're, oh yeah, look at that. that. So that's your fuel, that's the thing you're trying to pick up, is the little, the little poop icons are the things you're trying to pick up. And this game does not pull any punches, it holds nothing back. It is, it is all bathroom humor in this game right now. 996 Tech is the name of the game. In case you're just joining us, we'll pull back out to the wide shot. Sorry about that. <laughs> Our players getting up off the toilet. You gonna, you gonna close that lid or you're just gonna leave the toilet open? All right, all right. There's a little, little surprise there in the bottom of the toilet. We won't get too close to that one. Whose game is this? Is that you guys? Can I can I talk to you about what this game is all about? Um, it's about so 996 Tech is about uh, workers who work from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six day a week, which is an exploited workplace. So we designed this game so that all the workers could go to restroom to slack off of the, the work. So they go to restroom to play on their phone to slacking off. And that's why this is a toilet racing game. So there's some pretty deep meaning behind this game. Yes. And and is this, you know, how did you come up with the idea for this? Oh, uh, it's just like we look at the majority of company who kind of uh, make workers work over time. So we want to like um, just expose to the media that workers need the right to actually pay for their work. Like doesn't do not exploit it, our workers. That is a really valuable message. Thank you so much. And where are you guys from? Uh, we are from Parsons. You're Parsons, from where? Parsons of Design. Okay. So located in New York City. Awesome. And, and let me get. Let's see. I'll, I'll get a shot of the uh, your logo over there. Uh, there it is on the on the sweatshirt there, and there it is on the banner. 996 Tech. We just learned that the 996 uh, that stands for workers who work from nine to nine six days a week and their only refuge is the bathroom. And here we've turned the bathroom into a driving game. <laughs> yes, 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 we could, we could throw some profanity in there. <laughs> Thank you guys very much, really appreciate it. We are here at the Game Developers Conference in the North Hall now of the Moscone Center here in San Francisco. Uh, if you are just joining us, we've been streaming for a, a little bit over an hour now. Uh, at some point, we're going to be limited by our battery life in, in, in how much more we're able to show. But if there's something that you want to make sure that we squeeze in there and we haven't covered it already, please drop a comment in the chat uh, because uh, we will try to show it to you before our time and our battery run out. Uh, looks like we're, are we making crepes here or waffles? A oh, waffle, it's a waffle iron as a game controller. I'm going to check in on the, uh, the Facebook stream here, uh, see if we've got any additional comments. You can, uh, you can drop a comment on Facebook or YouTube. I'm, I'm monitoring YouTube a little bit more actively right now, but I'm checking back in with Facebook from time to time. We've got a little, little button there. Oh, wait, look at this. We've got the cross-handed strategy here. Somebody is waffle ironing with their right hand and hitting the button with their left. And then somebody is doing it the other way. Let's 
is there, can we, can we see the sensor inside the waffle iron? There we go. And right there, it looks like the player on the left has a lot of waffles all over the table there. The player on the right has a large stack of what looks like burnt waffles. Let's see, Mario says, the Central Land has a booth somewhere. You can find out what their booth number is. We'll try to track it down. Or if we or if we walk by it. Alright, now we've got waffles in various states of cooking. There's a grab and an eat. Not sure how they police whether the player is eating the waffle. Why use a waffle iron as a controller? I thought it'd be really funny. It that is funny. It's a for draws. So. It's a really close game. You guys got about four rounds left. What's that? Oh, it's a close game. They got about four rounds left. No, oh, unless. Oh, that last waffle. Good game. Stick around. This is stats and how you guys perform. Right now, I am incredibly hungry for waffles at the moment. I would very much like to have some waffles. Lego, my ego. I am coming for the waffles. If you're just joining us, we are here at the Game Developers Conference, currently looking at the alternative control exhibits here in the North Hall of the Moscone Center. The GDC has taken over all kind of, I guess, three or four halls in the Moscone Center, the north, south, central, and west. West is, is mostly sessions, and there are a lot of sessions, hundreds of sessions. Uh, some of them looking back, some of them looking forward, uh, some of them uh, uh, teaching new techniques, some of them, uh, you know, industry-famous game designers talking about their process. All sorts of sessions at this conference. Uh, where we are right now is the exhibits, and these are the most interactive uh, of the exhibits. In this case, somebody is climbing a ladder on a bespoke game controller that is, in fact, a ladder. Sky Ladder Repair is the name of the game. There you can see that in the background. And this guy has a little tiny ladder. You've got somebody with the itsy bitsy ladder, and then you've got somebody who is actually, he's got a, a power drill, and he's using that drill to fix the ladder. This is your game? Yes, this is our game, Sky Ladder Repair. What, how'd you come up with this idea? Oh my goodness, there was a lot, a lot of it actually had to do with like PDC um, feedback that we submitted last year, but like saying that we're not looking for more like accessible games, we're looking for games that can be played cooperatively and also more than like one mechanic. So we came up with a few different ideas. Eventually we landed on the idea of two people working together to like be able to fix something. So then we ended up with our ladder, um, we ended up with our climbing mechanic that we wanted to pursue, and then from there we decided to add some more mechanics. So we ended up with a switching of drill bits and actually adding the secondary one where the other player can control it. And they both have two separate screens, so they're playing, they have to work together, they have to talk to each other to be able to figure out what's going on on the other side to successfully go through the game. So that's kind of the idea of the game so far. Um, nice. The project is over at Miniature Nightmares, but I'm happy to go this is blue. Nice. So we've got a, we've got a cooperative game with two different screens, two alternative controllers, different controllers for the two players. Buy a blue drill. Can you buy a blue drill? And they have to be in constant communication as they play the game. Uh, yellow. Ah, okay, okay. So you need a you need the yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Ah, sorry. I don't know what you're actually going to do. <laughs> Thank you. You got that sound effect. Now that drill is not actually turning, but the sound effect makes it sound like it is. Yeah, yeah. You enjoying this? Yeah, yeah. I, I really like the, the idea of uh, not sharing information, <laughs> to talk to each other. Uh, and also the connected things. Nice. It's a very physical yeah. kind of gameplay. <laughs> All right, we've made it. We've made it mostly full circle here. Coming back past the mosquito game. 
we have a game that is a television studio. I'm a little concerned about what that's going to look like. We got a television studio game here. Sorry. This this looks like coming to work for me. Yeah. So what's this game all about? So this is Terra TV. Um, right now the microphone unfortunately isn't getting the words. Uh oh. How this game would play is you would look at the teleprompter, you'd read out the words, and you'd come up with whatever the news story is supposed to be. Um, for instance, the. I'm a bit tired from setting all this up. So you've got to you've got to read the words off the teleprompter. Yeah, well, you don't just read the words. You read the words and come up with whatever the news. Oh, would be. so you have to you see the words on the teleprompter and you make up the news. Yeah, pretty so much. So the game is fake news. Yeah, pretty much. So there are some hidden words as well. So again, if the microphone was working, you could see the weather side, running beautiful. Maybe you'd say it's summer as well, and, and go from there. Fantastic. Let me. I'm gonna look at what's on the prompter here. The weather, sunny, bright, beautiful. You, oh, you have to smile. So you have to be smiling. Now, what if it's a serious story? Do you still smile if it's a serious story? Yeah. You have to smile. So if somebody got murdered, you still have to smile. Uh, depends on the context, but... <laughs> We, we, we try to play into the humor of it a bit. Um, there are some like sections where you have to do like an ad read. And... Do you, uh, do, does this make you want to work in my profession or does this make you glad you don't work in my profession? Um, I think this makes me glad I do not work in your profession. <laughs> Sometimes tiring. we question our own sanity. We're the ones who should be wearing that. Let me see that hat there. We're the ones who should be wearing that Alcatraz Psycho Ward hat because we went into this business in the first place. And what's the name of the game? Terror TV. I'm terrified just looking at it. A television studio where you have to smile and make up the news. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. You're just joining us. We just had a look at Terror TV here at the Alternative Control Exhibit at the Moscone Center. It's Game Developers Conference 2024 going on all week in San Francisco. This is the middle and arguably the biggest day of the Game Developers Conference. And we're gonna take a walk back out into the central hall of the Moscone Center. I'm, I'm watching our battery dwindle down. We've now been uh, streaming for a little over an hour and 10 minutes. If there's anything you guys want to see before my battery hits zero, uh, please go ahead and let me know. We'll, be, uh, we'll try, to, try to walk by whatever we can walk by on our, on our way back to where we started. Did I look at the Sony booth? Great question. I haven't seen a Sony booth. I definitely plan to visit the Sony booth uh, during the NAB convention in a couple of weeks, which I'll be attending uh, not to cover it, but uh, to do uh, research and learning for my job. Um, but if, you, if there is a Sony booth, please let me know. I'll see if I can swing by. Here's somebody taking flash photos. We're walking past a booth full of games from Spain on the left and games from Costa Rica on the right. I always enjoy this Costa Rica backdrop. They've had it for a couple of years now. It makes me feel like I'm in a lush rainforest. This is the, the Italy Games booth that we mentioned earlier. It looks like a lot of people hanging out here. Take a little preview. Hell Galaxy is the game that they're previewing up here on the screen. And you don't even have to be a country to have a booth here at the Game Developers Conference. New York State, New York State of Opportunity. They're hoping that games businesses will incorporate in their state and do business in the state of New York. Here's RIT, I assume this is the university that we're talking about. Embrace the chaos. That damn goat. And, you, and you'll see this a lot. The Academy of Art, which is local, they have a game design department, and they, the students at the Academy of Art are showing off some of their games here at the show in a booth sponsored by their university. Ah, the RIT booth. Somebody asked if I'd seen the RIT booth. Yes, and I have friends who've gone to RIT. We just walked past it. We'll have a, we'll have a look at some of the games since somebody's interested in that. Cool math games. Hi. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I just wonder if you tell me in a sentence what this game is. This is Cool Math Games. We are an edutainment website that's been around since 1997. We have fun, wholesome games, and they don't all have math in it. 
<laughs> so despite the name, not all the games involve math. Yes. But they are all edu educational and they are all appropriate for kids. Yep, fun and wholesome for everybody. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and let's see here. Let's move over here. Um, RIT Magic Spell Studios, we see. Let's see what they're looking, what they're working on. When it comes to games, there's like uh, Ro Rochester Game Developers, which is a group of um, people who work locally, both like in the industry and also students. Oh, so they meet like, very small, it's tucked in the corner. Once a month which hall is it tucked games. in the corner of? And that's how I got my first co op, that's, which, uh, and then that led to the second. Yeah. yeah. I wish they had stuff like that when I was in school. So we have exactly. hit the, uh, the, the 2% at, uh, no, never mind, 1% battery mark. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and try to change the battery. And if the stream continues, then we'll keep walking around for a few more minutes. If it doesn't, it was nice of you to join us. And uh, we'll, of course, uh, have more coverage of the Game Developers Conference coming up. Uh, but for the moment, I am going to go ahead and, uh, and stop the camera so that I can change the battery. And uh, if, uh, if we get to rejoin you, we'll go for another 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, if not, uh, then we'll see you soon. And uh, here we are back uh, now with the, the battery on the camera changed. Somebody says, thank you so much on YouTube. You're so welcome. We'll go ahead and uh, refresh some of our status pages to see if we can verify that we are in fact still streaming. Looks like we might be. And uh, we'll have a look in the chat here to see what people have to say. And we're back, says Mario. Thanks, Mario. Thank you for the feedback. We have a full battery in the camera, and now we're going to go take a look at this RIT booth. We've definitely got some people with RIT shirts on here. And what are we playing? I'm like changing characters every time. We're playing that damn goat. Embrace the chaos. And there's the there's the guy. Ah, the goat just blew up. Good afternoon, Indigo. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. So who can tell me what this game is all about? Thank you. Uh, oh, fantastic. Yeah, so that damn goat um, is developed in the Rochester Institute of Technology. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to come around you so I can see the game while, while we're talking. OK. Yeah. You want me to like the camera, the TV? The TV? Yeah, I, 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 if you could put, if you could have the game behind you. Although you're, it looks like you're playing right now, so I'll let you keep playing while you just describe the game. I can talk about it. Okay. Um, so it's been in development, uh, and it's finally out on Steam. They're coming to Switch soon. That's that was their main objective initially. Um, the concept of the game: it's King of the Hill focused. Uh, there's a crown somewhere in the map. Whoever holds the crown for the full minute wins that round. Best two out of three. There's multiple characters, uh, multiple maps, and the main point of the game, you have that damn goat. Uh, he's there to really cause as much chaos as he can. Um, changing your character, changing the map, and taking the crown from you. Um, so the goat is there to cause chaos. He's there to cause chaos. <laughs> and, and, and you're trying to keep the goat from causing too much chaos. Yeah, we're trying to, we're trying to keep the crown to win that round, but the goat's trying to prevent it as much as he can. <laughs> Fantastic, and, and you've got that you've got that crown on your head. Is that you with the crown on your head? That's one of not me right now. Somebody's got it. Somebody is always going to have the crown on their head. Yeah. All right. Let's see here. And so was this was this a, a student project? Yeah. So this was developed by students, faculty led. Um, I believe it's been about three years in development. Um, yeah, feel free to take some stuff. Um, yeah, but so it was very much just students really working on it with faculty helping out as assistants. Very cool. Three years in development, and it's that damn goat. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. 
All right, so Hello QQW wants to see Anja Lens. I actually wanted to see that too. You said it was booth 945. Do you know which hall that's in? Is that in the South Hall by any chance? Because that's the direction we're heading in right now. Uh, that, was, that was definitely a booth that I wanted to visit. I just haven't uh, walked past it yet. Uh, let's see, and then also the, the Sony booth is apparently in the South Hall. Yeah, I'm curious what they have in that small space too. Because Sony is not known for having small booths. They're usually known for having quite large ones. Uh, you guys may remember Sony PlayStation had a huge booth at last year's GDC. Uh, PlayStation is not on the floor this year that I have seen in the same capacity anyway. Um, but what we did have yesterday, and, and you can see this on our NBC Bay Area TikTok and Instagram, and as well as actually here on YouTube, the YouTube Shorts, um, I, I compiled together about five game demos from an Xbox event. It was an off-site event that Microsoft Xbox held with some of its uh, hand-picked indie developers uh, to show off uh, some games from Xbox. And I got to uh, attend a couple hours of that event uh, and demo uh, about a half a dozen games. And so you can see a little bit about what that looked like. But that's the thing that happens at this conference a lot, is you'll have uh, some of the major players will decide one year that they're not going to have a booth on the exhibit floor, and instead they're going to hold off-site events. In some cases, very big and lavish off-site events. So that's what Xbox did this year. Uh, Xbox actually has not had a booth at this show since before the pandemic, I believe. And as you mentioned, Sony had a big PlayStation booth. It was actually in this spot where we're standing right now, the big Sony PlayStation booth. Um, and uh, it's not here this year, but we will uh, we will try to um, right here. Let's see. Uh, we're going to try to find that Anja lens. Uh, I, I saw this guy before. I saw you last year. You're rocking the pineapple costume again. Absolutely. How are you doing? I'm doing well. So does, does this promote a game, or you just like to dress up like a pineapple? So last year I accidentally took this to DGC in a panic when I was packing, making my game. And it went so well that this year, yeah, I'm intentionally just being wearing onesies all week. So uh, uh, is it different onesies or is it the same onesie? Uh, I got three onesies this year, uh, but yeah, this is the same pineapple as last year. All right, so and then what are what are the other onesies you'll be wearing this year? I got, I'm wearing a bear and I'm wearing an avocado. Okay, pineapple, avocado, and bear. Yep. Uh, I mean, I guess the only common bond there is that bears will eat pineapples and they'll also eat avocados, right? Absolutely. I mean, and there's not much a bear won't eat, let's be honest. True that, true that. And, and, and it, does your game have to do with pineapples? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing at all. But it sure does get attention. It sure does. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you have a great rest of the show. All right. We're going to try to find that Ajna Lems booth. I think uh, we're going in the perhaps the wrong direction. If it's in the South Hall and it's in the 900s, then it's probably going to be over this way. We'll find it together. Let's go for a walk and try to find that booth together. And by the way, we're rocking a pretty mean delay, so thank you guys for your patience. It'll, it seems like there's just a, a long lapse in time, like your comment is going to another dimension before I have an opportunity to respond to it. But that's just uh, the, uh, the video is passing through three different software products to get to YouTube. So thanks for your patience with my answering your, uh, your questions. We're walking back past the Meta booth where there has been a, oh, pardon me, or there has been a, a line to, uh, to check out this game for quite a while. It is the queue to play Arizona, Arizona Sunshine 2. That starts right here. Let's see, here are some of the games that we uh, saw previews of at some off-site events over the course of the week. And let's see, if we keep going straight from TikTok, it should lead us to Sony. Okay, so we're gonna check out, if we can find the Ajna Lens booth, we'll check that out and then we'll, we'll take a look at what Sony might have in store for us. Let's see, looks like some little bit of uh, booth construction, chair construction going on here. And let's see. We were looking for booth, okay, now we're in the 800s, getting closer. We we're looking for 945 or 946, I think. Three days. Finding conference booths, it's like, it's like an art and a skill all its own, isn't it? Okay. We are at 949, so we're getting, we're, we're getting really warm. We're scalding hot right now. We're almost there. Let's see, I, I have a feeling we're going back in the wrong direction.
There's the OnePlus booth. That was another one that I meant to check out. We can check that out if we have time. And let's see. Oh, and now we're in the 1100s. So we totally missed it. All right. Let's try this again. I just missed 945. <laughs> you, you guys are shouting so loud in the comments. I know I'm going to find it if I just try hard enough. <laughs> All right. Here's a Japan booth where it looks like the occupants have gone out to lunch. There's 957. It can't be far away now. There it is. There it is. We found it. And the reason that we didn't notice what was happening is they are busy executing on some repairs here in this booth. How's it going? Hello. Hey. My YouTube okay. viewers have been screaming at me to show them your product. Oh, Can that's you great. tell me a little bit about what this is? Yes. So there's like Ajna XR Mixed Reality Headset. It's the world's lightest headset. On these devices, like developers can run the ray tracing, part tracing experiences. And the end user, for end user, it's like a streaming. So it's like a Netflix kind of an experience in the gaming. Yeah. And, so and we so have the entire ecosystem and the platform. It's so show, show me the hardware here. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the hardware mm -hmm. with the pancake lens. So very small, light, center yes, gravity yes, stays yes. close and to the head. It's only like 400 gram headset. 400 grams. What, yeah. what is that in ounces? Do you know? Uh, I like, don't either. Okay. <laughs> but 400 grams is very light. I know that, yes, I know yes, that yes. for a fact. I mean, that's, that's about the weight of a smartphone, isn't it? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we have the adapter lenses as well. There so we go. the people like me who has a prescription lens. Oh, those lens. are the, the diopter lenses that rotate. Yes, so yes. So yes. you can hand your headset to me and I don't have to put a different lens right, in it. I right, just right, rotate right. those diopters until yes. I can see. Right. So it will give you the, give the like, people like me who have the specs, they can wear this headset without the specs. Now, is, is version 2.0 going to fix my astigmatism too? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Nice, nice. Yeah. I like it. So, all right. So you've got the you've got the uh, the audio connections there. You've got those flip down earphones. You've got the the, the flat display. It stays close to the head. You've got that thing on the back, which I'm assuming helps keep it balanced and, and yes. snug around your head. And, and, and the and battery the, with the 3.5 hours, like. And what is the experience of wearing this light? What do I see when I put this on? Okay, so we have the, the with the platform. So user can get the all kind of training. So definitely you heard about the GTR kind of a case study where like lots of gamers are into the GTR kind of a car racing. But they are like, they applied their skills into the real world as well. The people uh, won the Le Mans race as well, right? So the same kind of experience, we are like adding into the all kind of skills. So we are like adding all kind of skills, the real world physics, we are adding into the virtual world, yeah. And so am I, am I going to play like games fully immersed or am I going to play games that seem to appear superimposed on top of the real world? Both, like you can play, uh, the developers can create the both kind of experiences. And so is this going to be its own platform? People are going to develop specifically for this platform? Yeah, so we have the like open XR compatibility. So they're like, it's completely open ecosystem that we do have. And what am I looking at up here on the screen? Is this a, a, an idea of what it's going to look like? Yeah, uh, so this is like about our uh, Navidia application. So mm -hmm. on Esnavidya, like uh, users can get all kind of productivity, games, training, all kind of use cases, kind of applications. And so, I mean, is, is it going to be both a business use case and an entertainment use case? Yes. There we go. It's personalized. It's immersive. It's immersive. Yes. And there it is, right there, the beauty shot. Personalized there's, experience for everyone. There's the hero shot. And, yes. and can you pronounce the name of the product? Because I've been doing it wrong. Yeah. So the headset name is Ajna XR and the platform name is Ajna Vidya. Got it. Okay, so wait. So Ajna XR is the is the device or the platform? Yes, device. This is the device. And the yeah. name of the platform is? Ajna Vidya. Got it. All right. Thank you so much. Welcome. Ajna Reality right there. There's the headset. Uh, there's, sorry, the hashtag. There's the hashtag. And there's the headset. And it looks like you guys are also putting together a a racing car seat? Is that yes, for your yes, platform yes. as well? Yes, yes, yes. What's that going to look like? So, like, people can experience the uh, high and like high data experiences on the high car racing on the latency, latency free experience that a uh, user can get. Got it. So, I, I, I will absolutely feel like I am driving a car once that chair gets set up. Yes, 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 yes. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much. And if you're just joining us, we're now going to go fulfill that other request and go visit the Sony booth, which only seems appropriate. Uh, since yeah. we're streaming with a Sony camera right now. What is IO doing? 
And you're welcome for showing Earth 2, EE. -E. Yeah, we had, a, we had a nice little uh, Earth 2 demo from the Metagravity founder a little earlier in the stream. You can uh, scroll back and watch it. And let's see, uh, we were looking for a Sony booth in the back corner of the South Hall, which is literally where we are right now. We're in the back corner of the South Hall. We're walking down this aisle with some of the motion capture displays that we saw before, some of them, by the way, specifically for capturing facial motion, some for capturing hand motion. In this case, Vicon is doing a motion capture demo with a violinist tracking both the instrument and the bow and the musician. And we're going to see if we can squeeze in here. Oops, sorry. Oh, and by the way, there's a guitarist as well. All right, they're taking a little break. We're going to move on. S1927, huh? It's the Sony booth. All right, well, we're going to, we're going to solve this mystery. Pardon me. I like it. You guys are sending me on side quests. It feels like I'm in a game right now. Except I'm, I'm the only one lucky enough to be playing this game, and you guys are just watching an esports competition. This is, this is pretty fun. Thank you guys so much for making this such an interactive experience. I, I, really, I really appreciate your, your active participation. OK, so we were looking for booth S1927. OK, we just walked past the 1700s. <laughs> we are now. Absolutely, at the far end of the hall. We're walking past the 10 cent cloud. We're walking past the Qualysis booth. They're doing facial motion tracking as well as other kinds of motion tracking. And let's see, we're now, we're getting warmer because we're at S1949 here. Walking back past Arcade Play. So this is an area of the uh, South Hall that we've been in just an hour or so ago. Feels like an, a lifetime ago. And uh, let's see, we were looking for S1927. This is 1939. 33. And. S1927 is the booth for gate zero. And this is a game about traveling back to the first century. It sounds a little bit like the Da Vinci Code. Tell me what this game is about. One of our viewers wanted to see this game. Yeah, it's a story-rich adventure game based in ancient Jerusalem and you know Judea and Galilee, where actually you can discover the stories of the Bible. And uh, and what, how did you get the idea for this game? Well, it's actually crazy because despite the game industry being as big as it is, no one has actually quite done something like this before. And we're one of the first ones, not the only ones, but one of the first ones, and we just thought that this would be a great way for people to discover the stories, the historical stories, just as they are, and in an immersive, interactive way. Now, I mean, I look at this and I think, well, if you like the Da Vinci Code, you're going to love this. Um, yeah, yeah, and Assassin's Creed, you know, things like that. People often say that. Yeah. Very cool. I'm going to take a look at the, uh, now, are you showing a trailer here? Is that what we're seeing? Correct. We have several trailers. All right, so we're looking at a loop of several trailers here. Oh, great, great. That looks like the dev team right there. You can talk to our studio head, too, if you want. Hi. Hi. I was just I was just curious if you could tell me in a sentence what what this game is about and why Where people are you from? play it. I'm from NBC Bay Area. Nice, nice. One of our one of our YouTube viewers was curious what this was all about. And okay, I great. Good on that promise. Yeah, we are a faith-based Bible video game. You are traveling back to ancient Jerusalem and ancient Israel from a dystopian futuristic world called uh, Teropolis. <laughs> And you are you're utilizing the time machine, and you're going back to research uh, and find out about all the stuff that the the modern 
uh, oppressive government is trying to hide from you. All right. So, so much like today, we're in a dystopian future, and you're going back to biblical times. Exactly. Yes. And uh, and uh, w when is this game being released? It's uh, in 25. In 25. Yeah. All right. So you guys are you guys are at crunch time right now, basically. We have uh, yes. We have All crunch right. times. And the name of the game is Gate Zero. Exactly. Thank you guys so much. How many viewers do you have? That's a great question. I don't know how many viewers we okay. have, but a lot of them are on the chat right now. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Hello. Thank, thank you so much. Yeah. Sorry about that. Let's see. All right. You guys are checking the map. Meanwhile, we have been streaming for over an hour and a half, and it's probably about time to wrap things up. I, if, if there's any final questions that you guys have, we'll try to squeeze those in there. Uh, but we've uh, definitely been going for quite a while, and uh, if we go for much longer, the floor is going to close, and they're going to kick us out. Um, but uh, we are, in case you're just joining us, we're just uh, getting to the, the closing part of a live stream here of the uh, the floor at the GDC Expo, the Game Developers Conference, uh, here in San Francisco at the Moscone Center. And uh, I'm wondering, let's see. Well, um, Kind of trying to figure out if somebody picked up my tripod, but I think it's I think it's where where I left it, um, because that was the space where we started this live stream, all the way over here by the Meta booth. And my, what a big convention center this is! And this is just the South Hall. Um, you can see a lot of people, a lot of major exhibitors, and. Uh, We'll finish up kind of close to where we started. Well, somebody had asked us if we would do a spin around the, the Epic Games booth, and that is what we started with. So we'll take one more peek at the Epic Games booth before we wrap up. Yeah, it really is big in here. And yeah, faith-based Bible games. I, I, I haven't seen any of those here at this conference before, and so they may be right that they, they may be... Uh, Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but they may be the first to do that, or at least the first to do that at this conference. So here we are back at the Epic Games booth. As you can see, they're giving uh, talks on the floor all day long. And, and these are important because not everybody who comes to this show has the exhibits pass. And so if you, uh, or sorry, not everybody has the sessions pass. And so if you have an exhibits only kind of pass, then this is an opportunity to get a little bit up close and personal with uh, some of the engineers and the designers from these companies that you might not get uh, otherwise uh, Hello, if you have an exhibit only kind of pass. My name is Chris Murphy. I'm a senior technical artist as part of the tech consulting team at Epic Games. You can see the Epic Games booth is just epically crowded. No pun intended. They're still giving out that popcorn, which is sound real good. Oh, and so, somebody got beer. Where'd the beer come from? Who's giving out beer? Epic. What's that? Epic. Yeah, we, who's giving out the beer? Huh? Where, where, who's giving out beer? Where'd the beer come from? Oh, uh, yeah. It's on the, the If you go back? <laughs> yes. All right, somewhere over there, there is beer. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad to see people are, are not going uh, unquenched with their thirst. As we mentioned earlier, uh, Epic Games did their State of Unreal uh, keynote. No, he's a, he's a, he's a, you can see just how packed this booth is. But yeah, they did their State of Unreal keynote earlier today. Uh, they announced some of the new features that are going to be coming out in Unreal Engine 5.4. And a lot of those had to do with things that are going to make people and textures and clothing even more realistic than they already are, which is kind of hard to believe. This is the uh, the meta-human area where we're talking about making uh, photorealistic humans uh, and capturing motion from actors. In some cases, you can capture that motion on with nothing more than an iPhone camera. This booth just goes on and on. Here we're talking about audio in Unreal Engine. Here's a map of the booth. It is a booth so big, it literally needs its own map. Over here, ah, that's where the beer is. This is, you know, we, we know it's beer o'clock at the Game Developers Conference. We're pouring some, oh, Sierra Nevada. They are not pouring the cheap stuff. They are, they are pouring good California beer right there. <laughs> I 
Yeah, when you go to a conference like this, you always hope to just stumble upon a, a booth with popcorn and a booth with beer. That's your that's your convention diet, popcorn and beer, until the convention hall is closed, and hopefully you got you got invited to some sort of after hours happy hour type party. But, but there we are. What a sh what a shot this is, right? The neon unreal sign and game developers grabbing beers left and right. Coors on the left, Sierra on the right. I trust you. <laughs> this is clearly where the party is. We'll back up and get an overhead shot of that just for good measure. There's your there's your Unreal Engine booth, having happy hour here, just a, just a smidge after 4 p.m. on the floor of the Game Developers Conference. The party has begun. Two years ago. Here at the Epic Games booth. And you can see the, the the beers and the popcorn spilling out into the aisles here. Exactly right. where, where are you guys here from? Uh, actually, I live here. She's from LA. He's from Oregon. So, so Northern California, Southern California, Oregon. We have run the whole Pacific Coast. Uh, yeah. Kind of. We're, we're, Washington is not yet represented. We need to represent well, he, Washington. He used to live there, so he kind of counts, right? Born there. Was that? <laughs> I was born there. You were born there. Okay. So that, we've got the we've got the whole Pacific Coast handled for the most part. I mean, let, let's we want to start counting Canada. We want to get somebody from from British Columbia or something in there. I'm sure you can find yeah. that on the floor. <laughs> like, look, look, like the industry is, everybody's here. And there's so much games being made in Canada and Vancouver, so you'll find someone, guaranteed. And, and what are you guys doing here? What do you, what do you uh, what, what brings you here? Uh, so our company is called Azures. We do playable ads uh, on Twitch. So you watch streams and the ads pop up and get people to play for 30 seconds against everyone else who, who's watching. So it's actually a really new, it's a kind of new format uh, to get folks to engage and turning passive viewership into active viewership and connect with brands. So we built mini games that people play on streams. It's kind of a new thing. Mini games that people play on Twitch. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. I'll let you enjoy your refreshments. Happy, happy hour. Take care. Take care. And of course, Epic Games involved in a lot of the Lego, the Lego IPs. And, and here we are, here we have some people playing Lego games here. Showing off some of the latest capabilities of Unreal Engine 5 and giving people a, an opportunity to have some entertainment while they sip their beers. Oh, Indigo says make sure to stream the After Hours. Well, we already did stream an After Hours event. I streamed it on, on my uh, channel, uh, on all of my personal social media, as a matter of fact, and you can find that at youtube.com slash bloomtv, B-L-O-O-M-T-V, or bloomtv on just about any other social platform. X, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Watch Bloom TV on Facebook. We went to The Mix, the Media Indie Exchange. So that's where you could find that video. Well, There's that giant, that giant Lego, Lego horse. I'm assuming it's a horse. Could be a donkey, I guess. And let's see. Of course, there's Unreal Editor for Fortnite. We learned about that uh, last year. It is a, a version of Unreal Editor for building games that exist within the metaverse of Fortnite. And they were really careful last year to, to remind us that, that Fortnite is not just a game. Fortnite really is sort of a metaverse. And you can build games that live inside Fortnite using uh, an editor very similar to the Unreal Editor that you would use uh, to build a standalone game. That, that, that character looks like they've uh, taken a little bit of a beating. It is incredibly warm in here because we have a low ceiling in this area. Oh, this is the setup. We saw this on stage last year. This is the setup for using an iPhone to, uh, to capture a facial performance uh, that can then be applied to a metahuman character. Uh, so that you can basically have a photorealistic character doing exactly what you're doing, even if the character looks nothing like you. It's a llama, Indigo says. All right, I am, I am willing to accept that explanation. That character might just be a llama. And uh, let's see. We, uh, we were just at the uh, at the Osmond Pretty Road. cool what they have there. Mixed reality headset. And of course, no conference is anything without swag. And a lot of these Unreal developers, man, the smell of popcorn hangs heavy in the air right now. These Unreal developers picking up t-shirts and other sorts of free giveaway items.
and uh, and of course the chocolate chip cookies. It does contain wheat, but it is vegetarian. I'm oh, sorry. And buckets and buckets and buckets of things. Epic Games T-shirt giveaway. So that's pretty much a full trip around the Moscone Center, the North, South, and Central halls. Uh, I hope that I hope that we uh, showed you guys everything that you wanted to see. I mean, obviously, we can't possibly have shown you everything because this is a huge show. You can see just the scope of it as we've been streaming for now an hour and almost 45 minutes. So. Hopefully, uh, that just gives you a taste for how expansive the world of game development is and just how many people it takes to build the games that you enjoy. Not just the people building the games, but the people building the products that are used to build the games. And, uh, the, and, and you know, the people designing the art for the Continue uh, for another two days in San Francisco. Friday is kind of a short day, the way a lot of conferences kind of end early on the last day of the conference. But today is a full day, and it'll go for another couple hours today. Tomorrow is a full day. There will be evening events the next couple of days. And these game developers are going to end up leaving here with a pretty good sense and a pretty good inspiration for what they want to do next. People come here from all over the world, uh, al almost every continent, except I don't think there are any game developers on Antarctica, but correct me if I'm wrong there. But people come here from pretty much all over the world, and they say every single time they come here, they leave inspired to work on their next project. Um, as we saw, you know, there were some exhibitors who were here last year who, who are not here this year. There are some new exhibitors that didn't exist a year ago. And the big questions here, we're talking about AI. Uh, we're talking about, you know, what happens when you decide to use AI to generate art for a game? We're talking about the future of mixed reality. You know, what role is, uh, are devices like uh, Apple's Vision Pro going to play in the future of games? Or are games really something that people are mostly still going to play on a screen that sits in front of them? Uh, we're talking a little bit about retro games and, and the idea of preserving uh, the, the past, the history of video games. Um, and of course, every developer has their own story to the game that they're working on. Some told me they were working on their games that they demoed here for the first time for six or seven years. So it's, it's really quite a journey to bring game to market. All of these people here are on their own journeys. Some of them are making foundational technologies that either help game developers get paid or uh, help them design the art for their games. Um, it, it's really, it's a whole world and that world comes here and converges on San Francisco every year. It's a, it's a place where San Francisco really is the center of the universe for these folks for five days in the spring every year. So thanks for coming with us on this journey. Thanks for your comments in the chat. Thanks for taking part in this interactive live stream. And we will have more GDC coverage coming up. But once again, thank you guys for joining us. This has been a really great experience. And, and I hope that you'll tune in uh, for live streams in the future.